Program วิธีกิจสันตนีกัมพูชีนังปีพบโลกสวัสดีครับท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ชมท่านผู้ Uh, of great interest for particularly for Cambodia in the context of our evolution toward a, a lower middle income class, you know, uh, where the, the spectrum of development is getting more sophisticated, and how does uh, the world now, uh, particularly from the investment community, how do they see, you know, investment in particular countries that purely the traditional thinking of uh, FDI, foreign direct investment, portfolio investment. Corporate social responsibility related investment. There's so many things happening, right? Uh, and I'm happy to have uh, Visal. Uh, uh, welcome to the show, Visal. Thank you, Sipala. Good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Long time. Uh, uh, Visal and I we used to work together with the United Nations, and he left to New York. But anyway, I'm not going to introduce him. So, Visal, I give you a few minutes to introduce yourself. Thank you, thank you, Sipana, for for having me uh, tonight. And uh, I heard a lot about the, the show, and uh, I remember that uh, when we were in Geneva, in your yes. house in Geneva, yes. we were already mentioning about that idea of having this uh, this talk show. And I'm glad that uh, I have the opportunity to be here with you tonight. And um, so my name is Vissal. Yes, I uh, I was made in Cambodia. <laughs> made in Cambodia. <laughs> made in Cambodia. Exported to France. Yes. Uh, I grew up in France and uh, educated in France, and um, so I started my career as a, uh, with the F French Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, here, actually at the embassy, and then uh, I joined the UN, and then in Cambodia I was a uh, uh, the uh, responsible for uh, poverty reduction program. What year was that? Wow, that was two thousand. Three to 2009, okay. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, long time ago. I look young, but uh, you know, starting to get some gray hair as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I was actually uh, leading the reduction, the poverty reduction program, and yes. uh, dealing primarily with trade, private sector, gender. Yes, with, uh, that's where we work together. That's where we work together at yeah. the time. And um, pro poor trade policy. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, you know, as a UN, you have to tour around the world. Yes. So and then I had to leave. I had to leave Cambodia. I went to New York, mm -hmm. um, do my reverence yes. to the to the UN flag. Yes, yes. And then, but I'm much more. Uh, um, so you left uh, UNP Cambodia to New York in 2009, right? 2009. Yes. 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 Exactly. Okay. And then. I'm much more a field person, okay. you know, leading programs and teams. So then I went to Pakistan. Oh wow! Uh, for some years there to manage basically the uh, early recovery program. Okay. Uh, in 2010, yeah. the country had a major flood. Okay. 20 million people uh, affected. So we had a major program there under UNDP, and then after Pakistan, you cannot so much uh, have. Uh, a personal life, you know. Yes. So you need also to uh, build your own uh, family. I yes. Guess. And so, so I went back to New York okay. uh, and uh, starting to settle down with uh, my wife okay. and uh, my little girl. Congratulations! Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I worked also for the then for the Arab uh, regions. And okay. That was a time when you had the Arab Spring. Oh, you know, the entire okay. country, con the region basically yes. was a little bit under the. Uh, Difficult circumstances, yeah. and uh, also with UNDP, we try to um, convene certain kind of uh, program and messages in terms of uh, linking countries yes. through trade, basically. Yes. So regional cooperation, mm. regional trade integrations. Yeah. And then, since then, I um, I decided to uh, to take a distance, a bit from the UN. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know that uh, the organizations have some a lot of opportunities and potentials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
but there's also a lot of uh, systemic issues mm -hmm. that uh, prevent somehow full efficiency, I would okay. say, and leadership. Okay. So um, I put it distance a little bit and I launch, I co-found basically a platform, Investment Impact, which is... Um, Investment Impact. Exactly. Okay. And I think... What, what does that mean? What? It's basically trying to uh, attract uh, investments those who are actually looking at uh, social, environmental, and government and environmental impacts. Okay. You know? So they're not looking at so much about commercial returns. Okay. Okay. But you still have to have commercial return. You still have commercial return okay. because you have to basically guarantee the capital yes, yes. that you are, you are investing. But they're really looking at on those uh, social and economic uh, okay. impact. So therefore, they, uh, they're emerging. They're okay. very emerging uh, partners, emerging financial partners. Okay. And uh, so they're providing now a new way to basically fund development. Okay. By, you know, we have the traditional donors, yes. you know, the ODA, and since Cambodia now is graduating, yes. ODA will probably go down yeah, diminish, to yes. diminish into Cambodia. So at the end of the day, who's going to pay the bill, mm -hmm. right? And in the sense of achieving the, uh, the sustainable development goals for Cambodia. Okay. Yeah. There's a probably 2.5 uh, trillion dollars mm. gap, mm. you know, to achieve those goals, and um, so okay. the idea is to really to attract investment. Private okay. sector okay. has a major role in in, in that uh, in that uh, agenda, and uh, so we are here to support that kind of um, momentum yes. in Cambodia. Yes. Primarily, have have you seen some release happening? Yes, yes, yes. There's a lot of uh, momentum. I mean, mainly from the U.S., from Europe, in Africa. I think that uh, when we look at the numbers of investment of of assets actually mm. that are being uh, pledged, I mean, it's a, a huge amount of money. I mean, it's we're talking about trillions of tri mm. you know of uh, of dollars. Yes. And um, Asia is a very booming, obviously, uh, regions because innovation is coming yes. in, because you have a young, uh, young populations, and there's so much opportunities in, in, yeah. in Asia. And Cambodia has a specific niche in that, okay. specific positions that we do believe that uh, actually some of those investors are very interested yeah. uh, to come in and to look at basically any good companies yes. who are committed yes. in terms of uh, social impacts. Mm who are also compliant with international standards and okay. principles. Is that, is that something related or a continuum of uh, the, glo the, UN, uh, the global compact? compact? Yeah, it's, in, it's in the, indeed it's related to the global compact. You know, there was a lot of, there's a lot of efforts from the UN, from the development organizations to try to attract the private sector to join the development table. Yes, yes. Know, there's a lot of effort, global compacts. Uh, CSR and yes. all those uh, initiatives, but there's less effort on bringing the development organizations towards a private sector mindset. Uh, okay. you know? and that's something. Okay, that's so so the effort was more to bring the private sector toward the UN exactly. development, mm -hmm. but not necessarily the other way around. Exactly, and I think that's interesting. There's, there's a way how we can actually find the right balance. Okay. You know, it's not only come to me, Yes. how can I come to you as yes, well, yes. you know, and that's something that uh, we try to leverage because there's a lot it, of knowledge. It, it, is that part of this uh, 17 uh, goal of mm -hmm. the SDG? Yes, it is, okay. it is, yes, because as I said, there's a, there's a funding gap, you know, mm -hmm. so the idea now is really how can we mobilize and leverage private sector mm -hmm. uh, to get engaged, you yes. know, also in terms of those agenda. Yes. Be on the access to water, for example, mm, okay. education, yes. health, you know, housing, yeah. you know, uh, sustainable uh, agriculture. Yes. All those areas have a lot of potentials to bring the private sector in. Okay. You know. Obviously, private sector do not have their own way of, th of thinking, their own way of doing business. Yes. As, you know. The idea is also how we can leverage development knowledge, okay. the international exposures and experience that we gathered around the world in mm. Africa, in Asia, South uh, America. How can we actually use that knowledge and mm. plug in mm. into a business model. Okay. Okay. Then the business model recreates some impact. Mm. You know, and that's what we are looking for, the impact mm. that companies can create, can generate. Can can you give me a a, a concrete example mm -hmm. on how a typical project under the so called uh, investment impact uh, could look like? Mm -hmm. 
for example, we 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 are working with um, a rice company. Okay. Okay. So the rice, the CEO of the company, his business is to sell rice. Yes. That's his profession mm. to run the business to sell rice. But he's committed to also help the farmers mm. to have a better living and to okay. also uh, give it back to mm. the to the rural communities. So here we see that, that there's a lot of potential in the sense of doing contract farming. For okay. Example, All right. We can actually then uh, use uh, knowledge from the development in terms of resilience mm -hmm. uh, practices mm. of the farmers, and then it helps the, the company mm. to guarantee his supply chain. Mm. You know. Yes. So it's win-win in that yeah. sense. You know, the company wins in a sense of better market, better mm. image, better branding, better profits. Yeah. You know, but also. The communities, yeah. the rural farmers, who mm. also then benefit from mm. the knowledge in terms of uh, how to be more resilient towards mm. climate change uh, yes. risk and, and, and exposures. You know, that's one thing. Impact sourcing is also, you know, that DDD, for example, a couple, uh, you know, yes. ten years ago, yes. uh, was initiating that kind of uh, path in Cambodia. That's another way. Mm. How can we actually benefiting from, I mean, leveraging on marginalized people mm -hmm. who have skills. And who using have technology people. in this using case. Technology, yeah. services, you know. Yes. You don't need to have, um, and for example, we're doing with a company who do anim uh, animated, uh, digital animation. Yes, yes. You know. It's not with far up and little far, no? No. It's not, okay. No. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, Australian based Cambodian yeah. uh, uh, company, extremely performing, um, qualitative products. Mm. We employ, we try to employ marginalized mm. people. Mm. And, uh, and you know, you put basically a computer on them and then you learn how to do basically yes. creativities. That's mm. what we need. Mm. You know? so, so, impact sourcing is, uh, yeah, is also yeah. very important for, yeah. for Cambodia. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, the days when, years ago when I was in commerce, uh, uh, that notion of uh, contract farming I was pioneering at that time. Uh, I was pioneering with the wrong product and mm. say, but uh, because it was with tobacco. Uh. But, but uh, <laughs> you see, so I, I was hit quite big uh, by the uh, civil society. They say that I'm promoting uh, smoking. But, but it, it's not about that. But it, it, it's just that in that particular area in Kampung Cham, right? Yeah. People who live along the river bank mm. of Kampung Chan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of the river there, for a hundred years, mm -hmm. their main crop is tobacco leaves, mm -hmm. right? And then the alternate crop with uh, maize, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but until they, they, you have other substitute employment is their main source of income. Okay. But they are not sustainable in the mm -hmm. sense that they struggle on their own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was with Commerce and we have a partnership with the British American Tobacco, mm -hmm. and we went to contract farming, and like you said, we we look at how the, the this corporate mindset, who will make some money for sure, but how they also help, you know, uh, improve the life, the predictability of a steady income, mm -hmm. uh, with with the use of uh, not chemical as pesticide, but using the natural leaf of the local trees, mm -hmm. grind it, mix with water, mm -hmm. and then you spray there. And some, you know, uh, shrub there, they turn into a fire, you know, to so like um, smoke the uh, tobacco leaf, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. right? Because that, that's how they pay is by the yellowish, the gold color of the leaf. The golder it is, the more they get the money. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting that, uh, you know, uh, over the year, after I went to Geneva, when I come back to Cambodia, I happened to meet, uh, to discuss with uh, my brother-in-law who visit the area. And he said, do you know, the farmer over there still, thank you for, you know, introducing that. Because now with a steady income, they can afford to send their kid to study in Phnom Penh. Now, years later, men, this kid, who are coming from a tobacco farming village mm -hmm. community, are now graduate, have a good job, that sort of thing. So if you look at a continuum of a, of a decade long, right, you do see impact. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. so I think this is quite interesting, you know. And in Cambodia, primarily we're an agricultural society, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are so many other crops, commercial yeah, crops. Yeah. Like cassava, for example. Cassava. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it'd be good to, to, to look at that. Maybe we take a short break now. But when we come back, maybe we can take a few more agricultural uh, commodity so sure. and see how we, we can stimulate some of this idea mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. The other thing is IT. I definitely want to touch that. We saw you mentioned rice, okay? Rice, basically, so many things happening there, and it has a lot of uh, uh, potential, particularly, you know, in terms of trade. You know, we we benefit from the Everything But Arm initiative mm -hmm. from Europe. Yeah. We export quite a bit. I was involved uh, with the Supreme National Economic Council. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think right after you left, huh? Uh, with uh, Mongolian mm -hmm. you know, to help put together the, the rice policy. But mm -hmm. at that time, uh, what we said that, look, uh, rice, because they have a critical mass, so it's easy to mobilize the people, yep. the stakeholder. Mm -hmm. But there are other crops that have as much potential, but it doesn't have some, some leading uh, commodities to lead. You mentioned about cassava. Uh, I believe that cassava has tremendous uh, opportunity taking into account that uh, you can plant in remote area that uh, that would not be suitable for rice. What can you think of uh, investment impact? Mm -hmm. For example, in the, the case of cassava. Mm -hmm. Cassava is a very interesting crop. I mean, it's a second crop in Cambodia after rice, and um, you know, it's a very booming as, as a commercial uh, cash crop. As a cash crop, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a, a thing we call it the 21st century crop. Yeah. Why? It's something that because it's actually having so much, as you said, you can throw it anywhere, it grows by itself. You know, it doesn't require so much actually capital or investment mm. to grow uh, capital, uh, to grow cassava. And what is interesting with cassava is that the sub-product mm. that you can actually uh, uh, produce yes. from that. Pharmaceutical industry, for yes, example, yes, required yes. Uh, starch from cassava. Yes, yes. Chemical, uh, chemical chemicals, sprays, you know, yeah. and uh, plastic, yes. for example. Or plastic can be can made be from, made from, from cassava, cassava okay. as well. Uh, anything related to the agro-industry, you know, noodles and bakes bake yes. and, and bread and this kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a magic crop in a sense because mm. you can then diversify uh, your product and reach and connect to existing value chains. Mm. What Cambodia need right now, I guess, is that isn't it somehow in a crossroad? Because Cambodia is relying on existing markets, yes. Thailand and Vietnam, so okay. basically to sell and export cassava to China, yeah. mainly for ethanol uh, production purpose. But Cambodia do have actually this kind of, uh, um, I would say, competitive advantage because of the yield and the quality of the cassava uh, produced in, in, in a country that can reach new markets, mm. you know, like Indian, for example, yeah. who are actually a huge pharmaceutical, basically, factory. Yeah. You know, generic drugs uh, would require some those kind of uh, uh, inputs. You know. Yes. And the U.S. also now opening the doors in terms of uh, importing cassava. Okay. So I think that Cambodia has a huge opportunity in actually pushing for that uh, for that crop and mm. to transform. Yeah, from I think. Fresh I, I, yeah, to, to, I, I, to I think the the trick is about the word you just said transformation. Exactly. Cassava is, is quite voluminous in mm -hmm. terms of size, it's mm -hmm. bulky. Yeah. Uh, and when you talk about international trade, the transportation matter. Exactly. Uh, but if we can bring investor, uh, you know, with, with the a certain uh, transformation technology, right? So at least uh, the value added. Mm -hmm. Halfway, huh? halfway, doesn't have to be a finished product. Mm -hmm. right. I think the, this could be one one area that uh, yeah. yeah and the impact investor would be interested because you have a little waste you know when you okay. transform uh, the cassava and from that waste basically you can produce bio energy uh, you know, biomass you know, and that's exactly what we are I mean, then you can okay. enter to the cassava so 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 in other what you're saying is that you know along the whole uh, production chain we manage we, we have to capture each link of the process exactly. and turn into a sort of a, a profitable uh, sort of like value mm -hmm. proposition exactly. along that, right? Exactly. The waste, you go to uh, biomass fuel, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the, the transformation. Animal feed. Yeah, animal feed, for example. Mm -hmm. It's quite interesting, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So is, that's why it's a, it's a very uh, uh, promising uh, sector and, and, and crop for Cambodia in that mm -hmm. sense. So a lot of investments is required. Okay. You know, and, uh, we do believe that actually the donors actually uh, uh, are very enthusiastic about that sector okay. and want to invest more, but also the private investments. Yeah. You know, because, in, as you say, technology is required. I mean, uh, working capital mm. for those 
uh, processing factories to grow and to yes. scale. You yes. know? So that's something that we are also looking at. Yes. Mm -hmm. I recall when in my days in Geneva, we, mm -hmm. with the International Trade Center, we, we look a lot into agriculture product mm -hmm. that has industrial value. Mm -hmm. right? uh, we, we have a project in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Addis Ababa, it's about two hours from Addis, mm -hmm. uh, where we, they grow this uh, piment, this uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, chili, yeah, yeah but yeah. the big chili, right? Uh, ah. The big chili, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think they have another word for that but not for eating uh, and they, they will collect the chili mm -hmm. they will dry it and you see like you, you, you dry our rice here they, they dry it and after that they grind it they grind into a resin a syrup type mm -hmm. and from there they can it and who they, they sell to? cosmetic company mm -hmm. because that's for the lipstick coloring oh I see so and again like the tobacco mm -hmm. leaf how they pay by the intensity of the gold. Mm -hmm. In the uh, chili, they pay by the intensity of the red. You know, in lipstick, they have different red color. Mm -hmm. Red is not just red. There are Coca-Cola red, the Red Cross red, there's so many different red, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you see, these are the sort of thing, how you transform an agricultural product that for most of us think that we're gonna make chow, right? Mm -hmm. We'll make some mm -hmm. something to eat with uh, mm -hmm. you know dry fish or something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Here is industrial, you know, product that bring you know a exactly. lot of value and exactly. attention. Yeah. So I think this is something that maybe we have to educate more, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 exposure. I mean, this is very important for the farmers and for the uh, for the producers in Cambodia to be exposed to those existing value yes. chains, you know, yes. that so we can actually connect. Yes. Um, like we did in rice, you know, mm -hmm. like we did for others uh, for the crops. It is something that uh, exposing mm -hmm. exposure is important. Yeah. But what what does it take in Cambodia you know, to have the right counterpart here? Mm -hmm. What does it take? Uh, you know, so that they, because you, you cannot do this in a vacuum, right? Yeah. Uh, investor come, they don't have time to waste, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. So how, how do you see organizing the yeah. Cambodian, you know, business community mm -hmm. to prepare, mm -hmm. you know, adequately mm -hmm. to be welcome? Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, there's a lot of asymmetries between okay. the investor and the investee, yes. you know. Um, Money is there, yeah. but they are not necessarily present in Cambodia, okay. so they don't really see who's who and who's yes. actually had the potential. Mm. So there's a need actually to do intermediary, yes. you know, to basically connect the dots between mm. uh, sourcing the best and the most potential companies that have certain standards and principles. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, good family-owned companies can't reach to that stage. You know? Okay. Um, so it's to source those potentials and then to connect it with those investors, you mm. know, who basically sign the check at the end of the day, yes. but they don't have time to go and process okay. and to do yeah. some due diligence. There's, there's one. The second is the language. Okay. You know, development language, business language. Mm. Ah. So you mean that language? Exactly. Yes. You know, exactly. I talk, you talk profit, you took margin profit, you took markets. Yeah. I talk development in that. Yeah. I talk, you know, communities. I talk yes. empowerment. You know. Yes. How those basically two languages match? Mm. So mm. you probably need a translator. Yes. Yes. You know, and uh, because at the end of the day, we want to achieve the same results. Yes. You know, yes. one want to achieve better profit. The other mm. one want to achieve mm. more. I mean, profit, but also impact. So there's a need to intermediate yes. those uh, mm. those potential mm. with those investors. You know, so you have actually companies like us and who, mm. who do that intermediary uh, services. Okay. Okay. Try also to expose those companies to mm. say, to basically highlight that you have strong potential in terms of development impact. Mm. You know, you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah. But we see that in in your business model. So let us help you mm. to basically market that, mm. to brand your company in that match with the requirements of okay. those investors. You know. Okay. We're talking about here, for example, I mean, most of the SMEs in Cambodia, we probably required, you know, $300,000 mm. to one, two million dollars investment, mm. you know, small mm. scale. So that's the second asymmetry is mm. basically the amount of mm. investments. Some of those impact investors will look at tickets like $15 million investment, mm. you know, which is very really huge, I guess, yeah, uh, yeah. For, for the for, Cambodian scale. For Cambodian scale. Yeah. But how do we scale up, though? How do we scale up? That's what uh, uh, one way to do that is what we call blended finance. 
blended finance. Oh, blended finance. That's what the uh, World Economic Forum is exactly. pushing for that, right? Exactly, yeah. pushing for that yeah. because indeed uh, those companies cannot uh, absorb those 15 million dollars investment because it's mm. really huge. But if actually that we can leverage donors' mm. money grants, okay. okay, you know, providing 20 percent, for example, as grants, mm. then the, invest the investor will look at. Hmm, this is basically the risk will be mitigated. Okay. You know? I'm okay. getting into with the UN, with the bank, yes. or whoever. So I feel much more comfortable mm. to get in and to accept the risk yes. related yes. to the investments. So we do believe that the blended finance is a very important tool to scale, mm. to reach basically financial uh, solutions mm. for those companies to scale. Yes. You know? Because for them to scale, you need capacity, mm. you need information, knowledge. Uh, market analysis, for example, you know, mm -hmm. uh, those the investor will not pay for. Yes, exactly. Well, so so in other words, they will come in the later stage when the ecosystem infrastructure uh, mm -hmm. or whatever the business model is well in place, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? They already here. Okay. They already here. They uh, and uh, there's funds that basically pop up every month, like the mushrooms after the okay. rain. You know, okay. they come up. So there's a lot of funds and, and, and uh, uh, that coming in the regions in Bangkok, in Singapore, yeah, yeah. and Hong Kong. So they're looking at other sub regions right mm. now, and uh, Cambodia is obviously uh, high potential. Yes, you know, because it's a very uh, vibrant and dynamic mm -hmm. economy, mm -hmm. and the young people, the youth, you know, this is extremely important in terms yeah. of uh, accepting new standards yeah. and new principles. So they're already here. Yeah. I, I I can sing, you know, uh, because I go to the province a lot, right? Because for me, is how do you understand the the local reality, exactly. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because trade is not all about statistic, right? Mm -hmm. And the one thing I would say, right, this is where the missing link you and I, when we are serving in the UN, is that uh, we are good at uh, doing the analysis. No different than the World Bank and the ADB. We're good at number, mm -hmm. right? But then we we miss that local reality, which is that micro dimension. Right. And what I find, for example, you know, in the case of Cambodia, I, I did mention uh, a few years ago uh, to the Korean ambassador mm -hmm. that look, Cambodian mango. It, it's uh, every Cambodian have who have some land have mango trees, okay? <laughs> but mango is perishable. Mm -hmm. And if you compare the, the, the certain type of mango, it's probably the best right, in the world. Uh, the Filipino would disagree, mm -hmm. but for sure we say, okay, you in Philippines, your mango is the best. In Cambodia, my mango is the best, okay? <laughs> but, but when you look at that, so I say, if we, once we, the government can help tackle the phytosanitary side, mm -hmm. right? When we help tackle the market access side, mm -hmm. It will open a vast opportunity for social impact because mango you cannot run a machine uh, like a, a harvester uh, to harvest uh, the paddy right mm -hmm. Shh, like that and you got two hectare covered mm -hmm. here you're talking about people mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. who can just pick the mango wearing glove with the plastic wrap it up because this mango can you cannot have a shop because by the time we get to Oversee, it will be spawns, right? Yeah. But but the, the 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 employment opportunity is amazing. Now you see, we we have a market breakthrough, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think okay, that's not every mango type can be exported. Mm. But you mentioned about the waste, right? You mean here I'm not talking about the waste. Here I'm talking about the the type that would not be suitable for export. How can we transform into a mango juice? mango pulp, mm -hmm. mango, dry mango, right? Mm -hmm. You have the whole supply chain. And now with technology, it can do wonder. Exactly. And to me, I can see these are the sort of impact mm -hmm. that can have the critical mass mm -hmm. that you can mobilize. Mm -hmm. But the trick is how do you get an intermediary here while you are the you uh, in New York intermediary at the macro level, you need some mm -hmm. micro intermediary mm -hmm. for the collection process, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. And then Cambodia is a middle income, low middle income country now. Mm -hmm. If you talk to many of them now, they start thinking about health issues. Mm -hmm. To me, a fresh mango juice that is sold in uh, Bayon Market or mm -hmm. Thai Hood, something like that, or in Eon Mall, mm -hmm. right? 
you know, will fetch better price. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to have a can sure. juice yeah. import from Singapore? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not anti-import, mm -hmm. but I'm saying we have now the capability, the capacity, the technological availability, and the finance, mm -hmm. and the finance mm -hmm. to put this together. That's true. Uh, yeah. I mean, what you're talking about, impact investment, it has enormous opportunity. That's true. Because, as you said, it's not only finance, but it's also technology. Yes. You know, you know in the UN, we try to uh, uh, do a lot of soft uh, soft cooperations, transferring technologies, yes. and with more some success and some yes. limits. You know, we do have actually a partner. We are our one of the partners sitting in the uh, Harvard Innovation Lab. Yes. You know bench of young Einstein running around in, yes. in, the, in the corridors. We work with them because they actually develop new technologies. Mm. I'll give you one example. They're using basically um, s with silk, yeah. you know, the, 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 from the cocoon. From the cocoon. Is they, they created the solutions that can coat any mm. fruits, mm. like bananas or mangoes, and extend the life of the fruits. It's organic. And it's organic. Yeah. There's no allergy, hmm. okay, it's biodegradable, hmm. it's organic, everything. It's just silk, hmm. it's hmm. an organic product. You dip basically your banana, your mango in the solutions and it extend to 10 days the hmm. life of the product. Amazing, you know? amazing. Now, let's take a short break and when we come back, well, I want to continue on the broader spectrum of technology, mm -hmm. how it can use to advance uh, this yep. cost. Mm -hmm. Technology, Visa, technology. Technology, we, you know, at a at very macro level, even the World Economic Forum, they uh, start talking already about uh, the, the fourth industrial revolution, you know. You know, this year, uh, the Cambodian government, you know, it's like Prime Minister and Sand will, will host, will act as a host for the World Economic uh, Forum yeah. on ASEAN. Wow. So, so we, we get a lot of attention mm -hmm. there. But, in, in, the fourth industrial revolution is all about, you know, technology, mm -hmm. right? We're not there yet at the fourth industrial revolution level mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. But I would say we're somewhere two and a half, right? Not not three yet per mm -hmm. se. Uh, but the the opportunity of this breakthrough we can harness. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think there's a lot of opportunity for young Cambodian to get into this impact investment also. That's true. Yeah. How does this investment come in to help mobilize mm -hmm. this young talent, mm -hmm. this software engineer, young software engineer? You know, there's, a, there's this company with whom we are, we, are, we are partnering with. It's a local company, mm. Cambodian Young. What they do is just amazing. It's basically Silicon Valley. Mm. You know, you know you, they don't have to be jealous about those guys in Silicon yeah. Valley. They're developing basically apps mm. and, and, and video games yeah. on, the, on your iPhones. And one of the game basically uh, turns out to be the top three downloads in the, mm. in the App Store uh, in Asia for yeah. a couple of months. And uh, impressive, very mm. impressive, mind blowing. What we do with them is that we try to uh, develop what we call game for change. Mm. You know, how do you actually make people change behavior mm. towards, for example, environmental uh, mm. uh, standards in terms of Domestic violence mm. uh, towards uh, gender or girls, mm. you know, uh, uh, attitudes. So we do believe actually by having those games mm. on your iPhone, so you basically can you can actually transform at least mm. uh, certain to, social behavior. Social, certain social behaviors. Yeah. UNICEF has done it in Africa, for example, on uh, washing hands. You mm. know, mm. for example, you uh, you hook kids basically with those with those video games, mm. and you learn how to win the game by washing your hands. Mm. Massive impact. Wow. Okay, they come back at home, they wash their hands before, uh, after the bathroom and before mm. the lunch or the dinner. Tremendous impact in terms of reducing basically mm. uh, mortality, uh, mm. infant mortality. Yeah, yeah. You know? So those kind of things we actually try to do also with that company. You know? Another technology where we do believe that uh, has a lot of potential in Cambodia is access to water. Mm. Cambodia remains, mm. and it's very uh, uh, Sad to see that actually Cambodia still facing a lot of troubles and challenges in terms of accessing to mm. water, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, drinkable water and safe water. There's a lot of initiatives going around, NGOs mm. doing uh, sort of uh, water filters mm. and uh, those kind of things. I do not believe that it's not because Cambodia is poor that you require some mm. poor technology. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, some of this technology basically are 5,000 years old. Mm. You know, the, the Egyptians, the Sumerians have done already those uh, sand filter water. Yeah. You know, you can see on the in the walls and the, <laughs> the pyramids. So it's not new technology. Is that why in the pyramids you can see those those, those technology, right? Wow. What we believe is that okay, now we live in the 21st century. Mm. How can we actually provide affordable, mm. actually device that can filter water mm. at the individual level, yeah. households levels, mm. or more at uh, at an entity like a school or yes. a dispensary? So we're working with this management company mm. actually who develop young kid from Stanford mm. University. He get a grant. He get he develop a device that can filter water, any water, mm. actually, and make it drinkable and safe. Mm. It's a small device, and that's huge potential in terms of humanitarian mm. uh, and emergency Impact, yeah. situation. Yeah, emergency situation, yeah. like in the, during the flood, for example. Exactly. Yeah. You know, when I was in Pakistan, we had a huge crisis of cholera, and uh, yes. because kids basically were drinking water. Yeah. Uh, in all the woods, for example, were wet, you can set, you can set fire to boil the water. Yeah, so yeah. you basically after three days with so thirsty that you drink the water that you yeah, have. Yeah. And then you feel sick and you die. Mm. The best way to do that is to use chlorine. Mm. But chlorine is not... It's not. The, the problem with chlorine is it's cheap, but the problem with chlorine is that it's one of the key elements to do artisanal bomb. Ah. Are you kidding? Yeah. So it becomes more and more difficult now in certain countries to import chlorine ah. in a massive. But chlorine, you, you they put in a pool, no? A pool yeah, to clean the water. One, yeah, but okay. that's the. <laughs> that's not the one. Yeah, but the pills, the, oh. the concentrated ones, you know, oh, that okay. you want to put in the water, you know. So okay. you can turn that into to drinkable water. Exactly. Okay, okay. So uh, I know that, for example, in certain countries where you have those um, mm. militants and yes, 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 sure. war. It's banded mm. because you never know where yeah. it ends at the yeah. end, you know. So it's to provide an alternative ways to actually those humanitarian agencies mm. to resolve to address this problem of mm. uh, water. And this device that we have now, I'm not sure that brought it, but it's solar energy. Mm. You solar know? energy. It's uh, super resistant, tested by the NASA and used by the, by the U.S. military, and we can use it. It costs five dollars to do it. Mm. So for five dollars, you can actually save the uh, life of a child hmm. in an emergency Amazing. situation. Amazing. So, it's, so I mean, there are so many applications of technology. Huh? Uh, the way I see now in Cambodia, we we're talking about a lot of youth mm -hmm. uh, entering the market. Mm -hmm. How can we use technology to to sort of like uh, bring skill, right? Exactly. Learning skill because the availability of technical school. You know, it, it's a bit limited, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure there are many things that you can learn from, uh, you know, having a good app. Look, uh, the, the, the so like uh, internet penetration in Cambodia is like more than 100%, eh? mm -hmm. I mean, uh, per pop, uh, to mm -hmm. the population, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But GDP per capita, mm -hmm. we have more smartphone, mm -hmm. more internet uh, penetration. Mm -hmm. So how do we uh, use, uh, you, you know, when I speak to, to, to the youth group, I always say, look, Every one of you in this room have a smartphone, right? But okay, it's okay to send picture, you know, of birthday party, uh, a cake to your friend, to your whatever. Yeah. But how do you turn this as a tool for development? Yeah. So here we tr also trying to. We are working actually also with uh, um, an informal group of youth actually who are doing a lot of uh, debate discussions uh, among them you know, mm. about issues related to youth. You know. Yeah. Um, technology providing, uh, and they're all in Facebook, yeah. in those social media. Mm -hmm. What we discuss with them is that the idea is that, okay, you guys discuss a lot, mm. that's good. Now, how do we actually turn your discussion to mm. something much more actually applicable, yes. in terms of the policy network, yes. for example, and how we actually develop something much more constructive and positive. Mm. Social media and online platform helps with that, mm. you know, because debating, mm. It's a science, hmm. you know. It's uh, something that's uh, pr that's what professors are here. You know, yeah, yeah, are, you know, exactly. Uh, uh, so it's to create and to facilitate debates. Hmm. So we do believe that actually by creating this kind of online platform where youth can connect hmm. through the smartphones or whatever and contribute to the discussions, facilitated yeah. online, can really actually uh, hmm. develop new policies hmm. that we can then hand over to the government or yes. to the development agencies. Yes. You know what happened in, in the Arab Spring? All those youth hmm. were told you have the right to go and to 
claim for your rights mm. to your government. Mm. Okay. We know. We all know what happened at the yeah, end. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so then they went back. Mm. You know, you just drama. out. So the idea here is how can we actually find an alternative ways where you can find a peace and secure mm. way to debate and yes. to exchange and mm. to provide your insight and your and mm. your opinion on certain things that matters to you, yeah, you know, yeah. as youth. You know. Yes. So we do believe that this technology provides that kind of opportunity mm. for the youth to yes. express themselves. Yes. But in a constructive and in a positive constructive way, way. You know. And to looking for idea how to improve their life. Exactly. You know, and the one thing I love about this talk that I have uh, this program is that you know, how do we, with our exposure around the world, with different speaker, with you, with so many different mm -hmm. speakers mm -hmm. I invited, we all bring certain uh, exposure, mm -hmm. positive exposure, mm -hmm. in different parts of the world, in different time of our, our life mm -hmm. span, right? Mm -hmm. But all we need is to have somebody who say, wait a minute, this I can apply in my life. This I can use for my community. Mm -hmm. This I can support my uh, peer group to mm -hmm. do this, to do that, right? And that's how positive uh, thinking came about. Mm -hmm. Positive thinking help, but it's good to have something more concrete, that's you know, to support your positive mm -hmm. thinking, exactly. right? Exactly. And and I, I think I look at the, you know, technology is definitely one of the way that will help propel Cambodia to the next stage. Right now, yesterday, for example, uh, Aksi, Smart Axiata mm -hmm. is, is, they have a innovation fund. Exactly. Uh, they launch an innovation fund. Uh, I stop by there, you know, uh, where they launch, mm -hmm. and I see these young software engineer. You would think they're young kids. Well, Cambodian with small size, right? So when we look, uh, they're, they're a bit more high school. But no, these are young software engineers. That's true. You know, uh, they have uh, another company. They have but over a hundred uh, software engineer, and what they do, their client is eBay. Mm -hmm. What they do every day now, it is like uh, they, they do work for eBay. Yeah. But you know, uh, and they all graduate from the Royal University of Phnom Penh, from some local university there. As capable, and I, I spoke to the owner, he said that, uh, you know, they are as capable, because in science, right, I mean, uh, okay, we speak social uh, science, maybe my English is better than yours, your mm -hmm. French better than mine, but in is all zero and one. That's true. In science, all zero and that. one. Yeah. And once you master the zero and yeah. one, you can be as good as anybody else. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we, we're coming to the end of the, the program, Vizal, and I just want to say that uh, uh, your concept of uh, labeling uh, investment impact uh, is powerful. Is how do we harness that uh, concept to apply here mm -hmm. in Cambodia? Uh, I am pretty sure that uh, uh, there are many opportunity here uh, that will find traction in your concept. Uh, the trick is how to, through this program, hopefully people will write to me, will email me to say, look, we have this idea, we have that idea, and you never know. You know, we could develop, you can help us link to the, 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 the investment uh, you know, community mm -hmm. who, who be caring enough to look at Cambodia as one of their destinations. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And from there, you know, we find our own uh, personal satisfaction that we have uh, done something for our That's community, yeah. for our society, for mm -hmm. our country. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Any last word? No, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Sipana, for this opportunity. And uh, I like to call you the, the Cambodian Charlie Rose. <laughs> thank you. Call me Sipana. <laughs> no, but, but I, I think it, it's a, I, I welcome uh, you and you, you're born in Cambodia, mm -hmm. right? You're made in Cambodia. You went away in different career paths in mm -hmm. your life. And it's quite uh, amazing that we'll never lose sight of our roots. That's true. That's very important. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter where yeah. we are. Yeah. But the beauty is that whatever experience you have, we may go to the same school, same mm. university in different country, mm. but if you are coming from your country perspective, you sort of nuance a bit mm -hmm. your exposure to the local reality. <coughs> and to that's me, this is the, the value yeah, true, yeah. of yeah. having the Cambodian diaspora exactly. to come back. Yeah, yeah. To, to it's important also for us, who are former UN officials, that we learn a lot, we expose a lot, and those learning and those knowledge that we gathered actually are taxpayer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
and uh, we also want to give it back. Yes, you know, to benefit basically the, the, the people who actually uh, not have the chance or the opportunities to get exposed. So that's what also one of the principles that we are embracing is to give it back yes. to the people. That's yes. the knowledge and the and the expertise that we mm. actually gathered along the years. Yeah, good. All right, so Vishal, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, all the best for your new thank initiative. You. Thank you. All right, and hopefully we'll see you next time in Cambodia sure. yeah. launching other impact investment in Cambodia. Okay. All right? Good. All right, so I think we're coming to the end uh, of the show. And uh, to me, I thought it was uh, quite a rich uh, uh, discussion on something quite as innovative as uh, impact investment. Uh, a lot of things that was talk is not new under the sun but it's how do you package and the one thing I I, I would want to sort of like summarize a bit uh, from what we saw have described for nearly 45 minutes is that it's about the language issue is that businessmen think different mindset different language profit business rate of return right the development world you know think differently they think about uh, community, they think about social impact, they think about contribution to development of the country, right? But how do you bring the two together? Mm -hmm. And this probably what I would remember most from this uh, conversation is that if, when you bring the synergy between the business world and the development world, you know, with a good intermediary, we can bring impact to the country. And I hope uh, the, the, the viewer would start to think how can you do that you know and you have any idea you can always write to me all right on that note good night <laughs>